By the way, I lost so much track of time. I'm currently, uh oh, I'm currently in the middle of uh, playing a little bit of Baldur's Gate three right now. And the uh oh is my character is now surrounded by five people. I'm so things are about to get sexy. No, things are about to get fucking great. Doing a crossword. I, I an old man. I was recording a TikTok with my new D and D math rocks. How'd that oh, go? Nice. Uh, Beautiful. Good. Do I love these? Like just the. I'm I really like the color purple a lot. The the color, mm. not the movie. Um oh, yeah, and I just I, I love these dice. But I uh my one D D group, we had somebody in there that actually gave us a bunch of dice and I feel kind of bad because I literally just today just mentioned, hey guys, I'm not gonna be able to do <laughs> D D anymore. Oh, so you're just not at all then. I just said I'm not because there I got other things that are going on, but they did like something cool while we were doing D and D. They made this whole like little resin case. Oh, it, that's oh, really that's cool. gorgeous. And then we'll see how well this. I'm just gonna have to take that off and just. I don't know how that's well the light really shows pretty. it. So yeah, they're really pretty dice, dice. Then. Yes. Oh, jealous. All I think I'm gonna do is take just hand me, and then I'm just sitting here like I'm sorry, guys, I can't be in this anymore. <laughs> I am literally here right now doing this instead of doing um that D and D. So if anybody from his D and D campaign is watching, I'm sorry, I didn't know he was gonna do that. Except I kind of did. I if told you in advance. D &D. I was basically Shut doing up. it. <laughs> if anyone I'm, from his no. D and D campaign is watching, kind of sorry, but not really. Only kind of. Uh, yeah. You get... I yeah. mean, shit happens, right? Yeah. Exactly. Scheduling conflicts exist. That's what I was about to say. Yes, um, correct. So, side note, about 15 minutes before we did this, a so I do Pokemon solo runs, as y'all know, and post those on YouTube. Yes. A dude with 60,000 YouTube subscribers that I watch on a pretty frequent Just basis commented on one of my videos, and oh, I yeah. was legit shaking when I saw that comment. That's awesome. I turned to my notifications so fast, I actually heard my neck crack a little bit. <laughs> Pop a notification. Oh, oh shit! It's from. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh no, Grandpa! <laughs> no, Grandpa, I broke my neck again. But I'm Grandpa. <laughs> shit, uh, I fucked up again. That's fine. We're used to it by now. Yeah, fuck you. Love you too, baby. No, you don't. No. I mean, I feel, I feel something for you. <laughs> I feel something. Yeah. But hey, Something. everybody, welcome to Scheduling Conflicts. I am Brickerboom. Hi, I'm the Baby Rhino or Marcus, whatever you want to call me. Hello, everybody. They call me Pivok. No, uh, I call you Parker. That's different. That's true. Some call me that. <laughs> Some call <laughs> me Space Cowboy. List. Some call me the Gangster of Love. Uh, wow, Do some people wow. call me the Space Cowboy? Yeah, Would they? Fine. Why well, and then when I leave, they say, see you, Space Cowboy. Yeah, exactly. Hey. Oh, God, I love Cowboy Bebop so much. Cowboy Bebop's so fucking good. It is. Um, so, not to not to date this uh, too much, but... We already uh, did when we talked about Daylight Savings. We did, but I'm going to date it even more because the amount of stuff I have seen uh, online within the past 48 hours honoring Akira Toriyama... Has had me yeah. all up in the fields today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's been pretty good though. It, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. There are honestly, I would. You could tell me that you think he is the most influential artist, like in respect I... to his own medium, and like. I honestly don't think there is an artist that as many people would trace their works directly back to him, like one or two steps, and yeah. he would be the inspiration. 
Like, how many I people mean, can say, I got into animation, I got into anime, I got into video games, I got into all of this, whether it's an interest or it's an actual, like, career they pursued because of Dragon Ball, or because of this person who would then also say, because of Dragon Ball, or because of Chrono Trigger, or because of Dragon Quest, or yeah. Dr. Oracle, or all those other things. It's all the same. Everybody can just say, yeah, I saw this, and I'm like, I want to imitate that. Well, then it turns out that imitation was of an imitation of an imitation of an imitation of an imitation. Yeah. It just keeps going further back, no matter how, I, uh, how much you look at it. I always wanted to, when I was a small child, my first game ever I ever played was Sonic 2. I wanted to be Super Sonic. A small and, boy. Yeah, and, and it's funny what, because... What is that? It's not Super Saiyan. Well, and I love it that the, the creator of the Sonic game is like, yeah, I really, really like Dragon Ball Z. That's why Super Sonic exists the way that he does. They're... I, That's I might pretty good. Been, I uh, like that. I might have even mentioned this in the in a previous episode because I mentioned this fact all the time. Uh, for Sonic 06, when they were creating the characters, they're creating the new characters. I believe it was in the notes for Silver the Hedgehog. One of the directors, one of the pivotal creative minds, literally wrote, "He's just Trunks." I think is the character's name. I yes. have not watched Dragon Ball. He's just Trunks from Dragon Ball. Yeah. Wait, uh, who was supposed to be Trunks? Silver, Silver the Hedgehog. So, God like, damn it! Yeah, keep in mind, I was about to say, keep in mind that Trunks, the OG version, not Super, but the OG yeah, yeah, version yeah. had silver hair when he first appeared. But... I'm not mistaken, too. Silver himself was a um, a time traveler, if I'm not nope. mistaken. So, yeah. yeah. And it, so was and Trunks. because of that, they ruined Blaze's story as well. <laughs> yeah, that's not about right. <laughs> Like, legitimately, you can say it too, with Sonic 06. Worst thing it ever did was ruin Blaze the Cat, who should have been one of the best characters in the series. Guess I'm still oh, so bitter about it. I don't care if it's been I, almost 20 years, I'm still bitter. And I just finished my battle in Baldur's Gate, so now I can go back and focus on this a little bit more. Yeah! <laughs> if you ever wonder what's the best spell in Dragon, in Dragon Ball Z, oh my fucking god, in, in D&D, sometimes a good fireball in the middle of a big crowd with an evocation wizard is the best thing you can do! I'm so excited to be DMing again and just be able to use fireball against the party. Like I'm, I am legitimately looking forward to it. I fucking look like, okay. So I'm not big in, I'm, I'm big into D and D, but not the biggest. But when I started playing through Baldur's Gate three again, I'm like, a lot of this stuff just makes sense. And then I'm like, a lot of this also does not uh, form into the same rules. And I just like to see everything burn. I just want to just kill everything I come across if I can. And oh, it's the so best feeling ever. Robo. If you play the, well, if you play that in real D and D, uh, it's not the greatest no, idea. You kind no. of do need to talk to people. <laughs> but when, but when you get a bunch of, get the Yankee, they're like, Oh, Hey, give me the item or else. And I'm like, I can't give you the item here. I throw you the item. Oh, Hey, the item's magically back in my hand. Fuck you. And they're like, Oh, well, fuck you. I'm killing you now. It's like, I don't, where the hell it is? So, <laughs> I don't have a choice. Have either of you, uh, played fallout three? Never played a Fallout. Uh, no, I've never no. played. I've I've seen a lot of three, but never played it. Never so, got a chance to play it. I should say. There's a character in there that's that's rather infamous called Moira Brown. She's this annoying. Oh, like she's got that Minnesota accent when she talks to you, and oh, she's no. clinically insane. Um, I am absolutely making a shopkeep after her, and I am gonna have her protected with the most plot armor because I want her to annoy my D, D party so much that they never go back to the city again and just keep the plot moving forward. <laughs> In the one campaign that I did, Marcus was part of it. Uh -oh. That's what our DM essentially tried to do with my character because he knew I was going to roleplay my character really hard. And my character was an aggressively um, like eccentric and um, call a spade a spade, an aggressively horny bard. Oh no. So in other words, a bar. And my character, like I just thought it was funny, started to have this this absolute like just pissing match with a goblin, with this random goblin throughout the campaign. And he decided out of nowhere and didn't tell or at least my character didn't know that the goblin could shapeshift. He my character also grew very enamored with a barkeep. And uh, lo and behold, a certain goblin Pretended to be said barkeep, kissed, kissed the bard as, and then started, and then my DM just started laughing in the goblin voice, and the fucking campaign just erupted. 
It was such a I good moment. I got by Grubon. It I... was so... It was, Zelos got absolutely screwed. It was so good. I'm also going to need a second. I'm going to mute myself. My computer... My keyboard just did something, and now my volume's maxed at 100, and I can't turn it off from being 100, so I'm just going to mute myself real quick and see if I can't oh, fix this. Fair enough. Um, so I ended up playing a changeling bard uh, that was... He, I went the exact opposite of the horny trope. I made it so that he was essentially just the sweetest little marshmallow that you could ever imagine. But he was basically trying to do a cook show for the tavern, and him being the little sweet marshmallow, he was actually spilled some some of the ingredient on himself. He's like, oh, well, that... He just takes off his shirt and he keeps cooking. Everybody's fawning over him, and he has Imbo. no idea. <laughs> Imbo. <laughs> That's essentially what he was, and I loved playing it. Oh, we love to see it. Did... Okay, we Rhino know. just left. Good he, to know. He's gone. This is our. We got Spooky now. Bulbasaur though. That's true. Honestly, Spooky Bulbasaur like, is a better co-host. I'm unsure as to why my keyboard has done this, and I think I figured it out. Oh, I knocked the key out, but that's fine. And he's. I'm unsure why I did this, but I think I figured it out. What's up? Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, scheduling conflicts and technical issues all in one night. Sounds about sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Freaking guy. Well, the thing is, is my keyboard. It has a really cool, like, little volume thing on it, and I just hit it up by accident, and then yeah. it didn't stop going up, and it's still going up to right now. Even if I try to lower the volume another way. And, and it goes back up to 100, which is why my headset is currently around my neck, so I don't blow my ears out. But the problem is, we we get rowdy at least 16 times per episode, and your yeah. eardrums will be destroyed. That's yeah, why I have to keep my headset where it's uh, at while I <laughs> fuck with my keyboard until I can figure out why it's not why it's doing this. There is oh, always uh, anybody watching. There is always a volume warning. That, you, yeah. You, if you are head, if you are wearing headphones while while enjoying this, you are always at headphone warning. Or if you happen to be nursing or something like that, you don't want the baby to accidentally unlatch, given how loud we are. I stole that from another podcast. I'm not going to take credit for it, but that's what they always okay. talked about. They're like, "We're loud, and the I'm baby did unlatch." The, I'm imagining that trend of like, and and I'm sure. I haven't seen anything that confirms it, but I'm sure it's some level, like, complete hooey. Uh, I'm sure it's just complete BS, but, like, the trend of, like, I take headphones and I put it on a pregnant person, a pregnant woman's stomach, <laughs> and, like, play music for the baby. I'm like, first off, like... No. There's layers of skin. It probably wouldn't even reach the thing. There is also the whole, you know, lack of understanding of any words or concepts at that age. I fixed it. Proud of you. All I, had to do was plug it. All I had to do was unplug it and plug it back in. Ah, uh, yes, the permit back on it just work. You don't I have know. to believe me, but that's what I was gonna suggest when you came back. <laughs> well, that's where I just vanished off to. I'm like, wait a second, where is this plugged into? Ah, yes, the USB hub. Because I have, I have my keyboard, which takes up two. Mouse takes up one. Uh, mic takes up another. Um, uh, I got my Elgato. And a bunch of other things hooked into my essentially computer, <laughs> so I had to get a fucking hub in order to actually put enough stuff. And it's connected, and everything is connected to my hub. Oh man, yeah, my fucking VR headset is also connected in that way. We're all very Sorry. proud of you. Forgot you had VR. Yeah, um, this thing's fucking incredible. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to use it lately. Oh wait, that's the wrong VR. That's the one I need to send to Karma at some point. There's the right one. Yeah, the Quest Three. This thing is tiny. It is the tiniest it's little actually headset. smaller than I thought it would be. It's it's fucking it's anything. insanely small, but it is powerful. The only problem I have with it is that I have to keep this thing charged in at all times because I didn't even turn it on. Because um, otherwise, if I don't, it'll basically drain out the power completely. Oh yeah, yeah. it's at thirty-seven percent. So that's just to keep it stable Jesus. until I'm going to eventually use it, where I have to plug it in directly into an outlet. Otherwise, yeah. it just doesn't keep it charged. My God. Oh, well. That's the only problem I have with it. And if you want to hear something even worse about it, this is Meta's whole thing. They they have a charging cable, a link cable, charging cable that you can use to hook up directly to your PC. But that thing's eighty dollars. Now that seems like a lot, but it's fiber. 
So it is the fastest charging, yeah. fastest data transfer you can get. It mm. is actually worth the money. It's it's only well, I'll say this: it's worth the money if you use it frequently enough. Because there, are I some... have not been using it frequently enough yeah. to warrant that. But I do want to get more into like VR gaming because, especially with this one, if I have my room well lit up enough, I don't need controllers. It'll actually track my hands. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. It's really fun, really cool. Even like, God, I felt like it. You know how like you see like in um. Iron Man or some of those movies like that where the guy's just like actually moving his hand across the screen yeah, and he's like yeah. moving stuff. Yeah, I could do that in VR with that. I like that. That is really that is cool. so fun. Those would be those would be fun interfaces if we could actually like have those. Just like, yeah. <laughs> that was always like, like that was always my favorite part of any Iron Man movie. It wasn't like the action. It was also definitely Sarah and Robert Downey Jr. But just watching those little computer and science scenes, those are always my favorite part of the movies. It's it's something I love in, like, same with, like, something like, because we were just mentioning, like, Cowboy Bebop. Like, I love just watching made-up BS mm-hmm. machinery just, just like, working, just working as it should. Yeah. And just, like, seeing, like, how you design all these various lights or, like, Chrono Trigger, when they jump in the epic and like flick, he's flicking on all these valves. I'm like, what, what, what do these valves do? Why do you need to flick these on? You just discovered this serve. exists. What are you doing? Are you, these what if you're opening the gas cap? This serves no other reason <sighs> than to show that I can flip a switch and it turns on. Mm. Like, Chrono, what if, what if you're, what if you're opening the hood? What if you're, what if you're halfway through <laughs> flying through time because you've unlatched pop. the hood? Now it breaks and you just have a hood up. No, it's fine. You're I going like so that. fast because you have to travel through time that the hood just pops up and breaks off, and it's like, all right, cool. Now, 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 I don't need a hood. Now you just, have, you know, it's just there. Engines just visible the at all times. There, yeah, that means it's got better cooling now because it's going so fast. I, man, I am never letting you work on my car ever. <laughs> hey, good. I, see. I don't want to work on cars. <laughs> I don't like working on cars. I just well, removed the scary. hood to give you less resistance. It's okay. <laughs> People, you, you say cars. You also don't scary. need a windshield. You don't oh, need rear no. view mirrors. Hey, here, I'll get rid of these rear view mirrors. You can park closer to other vehicles now. Yeah, exactly. Squeeze in those tight spaces. That's why people ride Listen. motorcycles. Mechanic. You hear you hear that <laughs> crunching sound. Yeah. You hear that crunching sound when you get near a uh, car. That means you're doing good. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. If, yeah, if, it's you like hear, a... if you hear a scraping on the right side of your car, don't worry. You have not run into the car on your left. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate, though. I actually had one moment, too, and this one upset me the most. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I park at, like, work or somewhere else, I always reverse into the parking spot. I don't know about oh, you guys, but I always reverse you're one of those fancy hoes. Okay. I never do. I, that's because I learned... I basically trained myself how to do it properly. I could do it without right. a backup cam or anything, but... <laughs> Back my off. one car, my first car that I had, at my first job that I got when I moved to New Jersey, they had like this big medium in front of the uh, parking spot. And it's like, okay, cool. That's just to prevent you from rolling off because there was a hill on the other side. I got a little too close to that. And I just started hearing the current of my oh, fucking front no. bumper hitting it. I'm like, oh, I didn't judge my car properly today. today? So I got that. I just heard, today, that was the only time I, uh, there was one other time, but that's because somebody then folded in their mirror. <laughs> I've street only... side parking, street side parking. I'm on the right side, and I'm pretty close to the cars on the right side because an asshole on my left is a little too far to the right. So I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna be a little farther over. Somebody then move their mirror in, and then just boom. And as yeah. I'm driving, I just look over. Mike, I'm just driving. Look over. I roll down my window. Pop. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> my mirror didn't break. They're shattered. And you left. Not my fault. You left your mirror out. <laughs> What? I, I I have no comment on the matter. Listen, I'm not gonna stop and deal with the shit in the middle of busy traffic with nowhere to even park or do anything about it, and even attempt to find this car. I'm going home from work. I'm tired of this shit already. Question Besides. one of this week's <laughs> quiz that <laughs> we're gonna on, be hold doing. On, hold on. You, you you're telling me you guys would stop. I would leave a note at the very least. So how far down are you going to drive? How far down are you willing to drive to find a spot to park to now have to walk back to leave a note? Because there is no stop. What's the weather like? I'll pull the spot immediately. Yeah, like I'll 
And if they're in their car, like, I don't care even if I'm at fault or not. If someone makes any contact with my car, I'm immediately pulling over. If they don't pull over as well, I'll track their well, place no, if no, they no, were no, at no, cause. No, 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 no. If, if we just scrape by and they just drive away, no, they don't no. cause of it. Okay. You guys are misunderstanding. Get no, he would, the, it was a parked car that he did this to. Yeah, then I'm, then I'm pulling yeah. over as soon as I can, getting out, running back, leaving it on. I don't care how far I'm walking. Yeah. No, no, fuck that. I'm going home. So Marcus ruined someone's day. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, yeah. it wasn't the first car that got hit there. Reminds me, too, of a friend of mine who told me that his mom hit a horse. You know, one of those traffic horses that oh. sit in the middle of a construction site. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we thought the same thing. I know you did. That's why I, my friend I, tells me the joke that every time. I live in Alberta, so honestly, someone just someday just running into a horse is absolutely plausible. Well, isn't moose <laughs> more likely? No, I'd say you're probably more likely just for sheer volume of how many we are we see. Granted, you're probably more like a moose on its own is probably more likely from what I've seen to be near near like a highway or something than a horse. Yeah. But they're just more, from what I can, like, okay. you just would see more horses I, than a, a I moose. I saw a, a TikTok of a moose, and they're just so much bigger than what I oh, would have massive. ever thought. Like, they're these massive are animals. massive dinosaur Pokemon-type creatures, and yeah, you, nobody seems to realize that. Yeah, nobody like, seems it's... To care. It's kind of funny because um, one of the mutual friends, Marks, and I have uh, from New Zealand, like I always make the joke, I'm never going down there. Those spiders are terrifying. I'm going, I'm avoiding them. They're deadly. They're evil. And they'll always make like responses like, spiders aren't really like, they're big and there are some bad ones, but they're not really like, in no, terms of animal threats, to they're not something you need to be as worried yeah. about. It's the same thing over here with, with the bears. Yeah. Like there are some aggressive bears and don't like, obviously like, you're holding food if you're not being bear safe, especially like if you're in the mountains or if you're, you know, walking between a bear and its cub. Yeah. But that is not the first animal threat or like the first animal thing you should be prepared for. Yeah. Now, or aware I of, you know, happily die trying to pet a bear and boop it on its snoot. I'm just saying, like, I, if that's Please how I pet. die, that's how Please I die. Please do not pet the bears. Can I but why, if not friend, why French shape? Exactly. I can't believe I'm agreeing with the criminal here, but exactly. <laughs> hey, I'm not a criminal. I'm just tired and going home. Do not pet the That bears. just makes you a sleepy criminal. You know what they say, God gives his, his deadliest crimes to his eepiest of criminals. <laughs> I think that's how that's it goes. That's from the Bible. <laughs> I think that's, I think it's in Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to really quote the Bible, everyone's guilty of crimes all the time, every time. Well, yeah, if you want to count the actual law, everyone is pretty much always guilty of crimes. Oh, like, wait, realistically, if you count speeding as a crime, we are all criminals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, I, you, I, or I jaywalking, or... Yeah. I jaywalk all the time. Listen, I... You know what? I don't, I don't jaywalk. I don't believe you. I never I, really do that at, at this anymore. point, from what you the the little bit of your uh, crime lord history that I know about you, I can only assume that you are actually Heisenberg. Did I tell you that? Oh wait, no. Did I ever tell you guys that the one time I got into a car accident, literally right outside my job, my job, because somebody took a left turn as mm -hmm. I was taking a left turn and they went too fast? I think I told you guys that my license yeah. plates came back as stolen. <laughs> yeah, I, they yeah, weren't stolen. Miss. But they came back as stolen. Yeah, so I'm also now at my own job being accused of being a criminal or some sort of crime lord because of this stuff. Well, they're not. I wrong. swear to God, I'm in. I'm innocent. I have done no crimes. I have not done many. I have not done crimes that how you have been accounted for yet. That's just what a criminal would say. Yeah, exactly. Like that sounds exactly like something. A criminal I, I, would say. I've I've been I've done crimes. Everybody's done crimes. Now, but he's, nobody's found. He's sounding more like a lawyer now. He's a criminal. I mean, that's just part of my Jewish background. No, I think you mean accountant. No, 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 no. no pretty... A Jewish lawyer is also... No, no, Jewish pretty lawyers common. are also pretty good at that. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, I I was what was Akira Toriyama's first manga? A, Dragon Ball Z. B, Dr. Slump. C, Sandland. Was it I'm B, Dr. Slump? I'm saying Sandland. 
It was it, Dr. Slump. It was Dr. Slump. Yeah. And you made all these about him, huh? No, because honestly, I couldn't find enough um, oh, enough day. little things about him that aren't like the most well-known. Like, it was going to be... If I did stuff like that, it would be going more into depth of each of these particular anime rather than about him. Yeah, that's fair. Um, what is the most popular indie game according to IGN polls? A. Stardew Valley. B. Hollow Knight. C. Return of Obra Din. I've never even heard of, of this one. Yeah, you, you, we. We've like been in shows has, where this has been around. I, um, hold on, I just you would got probably it. recognize it. I uh, just, Stardew. It has to be Stardew. It is Return I, of Obra Din. What the fuck is Return of Obra Din? I don't even oh. know. I've never even see, heard of it. See, the funniest thing is that of those answers, I'm like, if we're talking the overall most popular indie game, I'm like, Minecraft. Yeah. Cave story. This was uh, just something that I found on uh, the IGN website because I go hunting for things. Okay, hold on. I'm just looking stuff up real quick. IGN. Just, this is based off of just Steam in general. We're just looking at the Steam. Okay, all time reviews of Stardew Valley is at 556,000. The return of Obra Din is 200, or not 200, 22,000. How did this end up being more popular? This is all for Steam, though. But IGN. That's a... Yeah, it's yeah. IGN, so that that's why I like pulling IGN stuff, because it's usually just wrong, so there's no way you're going to get the answer with your, uh, like, gut instinct. Yeah, because gut instinct would say Stardew. Mm -hmm. so you look at Stardew, everybody knows Stardew. You talk to any random person, they're like, oh yeah, we know Stardew. Yeah. Yeah, but Return of Obra Dinn. What the fuck is Return of Obra Dinn? Never even heard I of look it, it up today. I'll be I honest, up. I'm looking it up on Steam, and it actually looks kind of fucking cool. See? Like yeah, it has, it's it has art style. Yeah, it, the art style on it is like four bit. Basically, it's only four different colors, but you use those kind of colors to literally create the entire world around it That's and cool. make a 3D game out of it. Yeah, it's a gorgeous, like whimsically creative game. What is this about? I think the I think best thing going that I ship. have heard is you saying whimsically creative in just that stoic voice that you just had. Accurate, it was very yeah. like Captain Holt from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> it was whimsically creative. <laughs> Yay. I'm... It's a mystery of that nature based on the That was amazingly funny. And logical so deduction. It's a, literally a mystery game about the yeah. ship, the Oprah Din. Yeah, That's you're, cool. You're welcome. I gave y'all a new game to try. It's a very it's twenty bucks. People, I don't have like, money for this. Yes. Everyone that I remember, I think it was yeah, in 2018, I think it was the Game Awards. It took a share, a fair bit of awards. Wow. All right. Hey. Yeah, yeah, like it know. was. It, it was yeah. a very regarded, very well regarded uh, game when it came out. You know. We could give the Game Awards a lot of shit, but when they actually did the things of like, here's a bunch of indie stuff that's coming out that you might not know of, but looks really fucking it cool. The indie here you creators go. A lot. And then yeah. they were like, but what if we instead now? What if we let Dwayne Johnson peddle an energy drink, or had, uh, or had yeah. Vin Diesel and Michelle Rodriguez come on to tell us about how they play to Ken fighting games? It's about drive. It's about power. We stay hungry. We devour. Put in the work. Put in the hours <laughs> and take what's ours. But I'm not hungry anymore. I just ate dinner. Fair enough. What animatronic <laughs> scared the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's the most? A. Bonnie. B. Chica. Or C. Freddy Fazbear himself. Was it Bonnie, Chica, Freddy? Yes. I don't even know what any of those are. I'm gonna be Bonnie. Life. I, I, I'll say Chica. I I, I assume so Freddy Chica, is the orange Chica guy. Chica is the duck. No. Freddy is the yes. bear. Bonnie is yeah. the blue, like, rotting rabbit. Rabbit. That's why I'm saying Bonnie, because of Bonnie being, like, legitimately the first one you see more often. Yeah, but I'll, I'll give you the, the chance change. to look him up real quick if you want to change your answer. Oh, that's yeah. not what I was thinking at all. No, I'll keep mine. All right. The answer is... Bonnie, actually. Um, out of all yeah. of them, that is the one that you uh, saw the most. And fun fact, the jump scares that you actually see are just replayable GIFs. That's how they yes. were created. They weren't like, there wasn't <laughs> legit animation put into these. They were just moving GIFs and adding yeah. a soundbite to it. And I think that is 
So Amazing. to give you an idea of like Scott Cawthorn is the man who made the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you ever look up all the games he's ever made before he made Friday Fights at Freddy's, he made a game called Fart Hotel. Literally a game about trying not to fart. To be fair, like, I shit you not. I, well, the, well, they didn't want to shit either. You, you might not be shitting if you're farting that often. <laughs> if you're well, farting that well, often, I please mean, go to the bathroom. Yeah, if you're farting say, that often, it's a... It's oh, an IBS God. warrior moment. What happened? What? What's wrong, Bricker? What was the most popular oh. Facebook game at the height of Facebook gaming? Oh. A. Farmville. B. Candy Crush. C. Pet Society. Candy Crush? No. I'm, I'm going got, Farmville. I'm, I'm going Farmville. Because we're talking specifically about Facebook. Yes. Like an overall game, I would think Candy Crush is more, but I'd have to guess Farmville. Because Farmville was, like, that Every, Facebook game. Everyone's aunt on Facebook was playing Farmville. Or their mother. Or During mother. Oh, the height of Facebook gaming, it was Candy Crush, actually. Ah. Oh, I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, because I think it was basically because during the height of Facebook oh, you know gaming, mobile phones had become super super popular, and I think that's what yeah. had people. Same thing. Yeah. That, that's 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 what I wasn't thinking of because was I'm overlap. thinking like, you know, Candy Crush. Everybody would just have it on their phone. Yep. Yeah. But if you're saying Facebook gaming, it's like it's Facebook. Was, you would yeah. think just Facebook, but you're gonna also be able to play that off your phone yeah. through Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't think about that yep. part. Ah. Um, how many oh, views gosh. per month did the Neopets website average during its height? A, Not enough. A, 2 Shut billion up. views a month, B, 20 billion views a month, or C, 199 million views a month? The what two, were the numbers? 2, two million? billion, 20 two billion, million. and 199 million. 199 million. That's way too specific mm. of a fucking number. And I hate the fact that you put that in there because that's probably what's going to throw me off. 199 million. That seems low. That it seems does. Be low for but how many people viewed Neopets in a month? Just gonna, in a month. In a mo I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, gonna go with the two bill. Two bill. Okay, and you're going with 199 right now? I hate how specific it is. So that. It is two billion. Yeah, okay, that's fair. <laughs> and then, that's, last but not so least, much. for my Walking Dead fans out there, what was the name of Negan's baseball bat? A. Norman Reedus. Close. A. <laughs> Sandy. B. Lisa. C. Lucille. C. I, I never watched the show, so I'm going to guess Lucille. You are correct. It is Lucille. Yeah, I feel like I've heard. So I thought I heard somebody. It's really funny because I was like, I remember hearing people say like "Breakout Lucille," and I know <laughs> that I've heard that for before. I've never watched Walking Dead. I was thinking of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air and the episode to, oh where where Uncle Phil hustles Will. Yeah, and he, they go to the pool house, and he actually doesn't know, and then he goes, "Jeffrey, break out Lucille," and Jeffrey and like pulls up his shirt and pulls out a just, pool cue. Uh, listening Man, to that sound good. clip, click off of this for a second, go listen. But just him going, "Jeffrey, break out Lucille," I'm like, "Oh my god!" What? It's just I, such a. It's, it's, it's just literally the like. Rest in peace, James Avery. Honestly, mm. the soon. only reason. The only reason I knew it was Lucille was because I'm pretty sure I heard it in a video or video game where somebody talking about it while they were playing a Walking Dead game. Yeah, that's and that's the right. only reason I remembered the name. I've never I've watched a little bit of the first season of Walking Dead, and then my immediate thought was, I know exactly where this is going. It went exactly where I thought it was going. Not about the zombies, about the humans. I, I mean, want zombies. It's kind of one of those things, and I think The Last of Us, um, The Walking Dead other zombie movies or genres yeah. of any kind like it, it's kind of one of those things of they're not really breaking the mold or trying something that's like incredibly brand new because after a while you learn to adapt improvise and overcome the zombie hordes that are actually headed at you especially depending on the type of zombies so eventually mm. yeah it yeah. is going to be the free thinkers not the horde mind that's coming after you 
Which actually, that that's one of the reasons I really like a couple of different ways they did zombies. Like 28, 28 weeks later, mm -hmm. those series with the horde zombies that move fast. World War Z zombies where the only way to kill them was to shoot them in the head. Well, I that was that my was favorite type most of zombies. zombies. No, most zombies, you cut off their head, they'll be dead. World War Z zombies, oh, these you cut have off to their be head. Shots. Yes. Oh, they have weird. to actually, their brain has to be destroyed. That is actually in the World War Z book as well, too, that they talk oh. through it. You can have a zombie's head in, like, muck, step on it, and it will still be able to bite you, infect you, and kill you. I wonder, because there are a few instances of The Walking Dead where, um, and spoiler alert, I guess, um, <laughs> Herschel, he dies at the end of season three or four. His head gets sliced clean off, and then later his head is still I'm, I'm, I'm trying to actually bite at something and they have to actually stab through the front of the skull to hit the brain. So I'm wondering if uh, Walking Dead had ended up uh, ripping that or if it's just a common misconception they, kind of deal. They may have ripped it just That's because it's like, just because of how big World War Z got. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, if you ever watched the World War Z movie, I never have. I only read the book. Yeah. I heard the movie was awful because they don't I mean, exactly tell you the fact that the World War Z book is literally just a bunch of different stories of survivors mm. from World War Z. Huh. It's not actually like oh. it, it's literally a person just telling you a story of many other people's stories. And if you ever read the audiobook, they have people doing different voices for everybody, which is really cool. That's oh, I like that. Uh, I like yeah, that audiobooks zombie. actually put in like work like that. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite zombie is my favorite series for how it handles zombies is Shantae. Shantae? Wait, the, the fucking genie Roddy game? Tops is, Ro yeah, Roddy Tops is my favorite Shantae character because she's just an absolute shit disturber and I love her so much and her family I, is great. I thought you were going to say Shaun of the Dead, so... I I am a I big mean... fan of the Cornado Trilogy as a whole. <laughs> Hot Fuzz is one of the greatest films ever made. I we will bad guys? defend that. You say it was Roddy Tops? Yeah. Okay, what makes her? I'm looking at her, and she just looks like your normal girl. Just oh, never mind. I see the fucking yeah. She's a zombie. She can rip. She can rip off her things and like. That's yeah, fucking can, hilarious. Yeah, Wait. it's great. I love her. That's good. That's a good zombie way. Do good way to make a zombie still human, but be able to do the zombie thing of like you would see in most cartoons or something. They just take stuff. their arm. It's a weapon and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't need your help. She'll give herself a hand. Arms. <laughs> hey, guess what? I could give myself a hand. Pop. <laughs> now, do, are they just able to, like, reattach it at that point, yep. then? Oh, all right. Is there a zombie? Like she's I'll got like a family a of, uh, and she's got a family of zombie brothers. It's great. It's, I, I love them all. I can dig it. I like that. I, I love the Shantae series, so. I've never played it, but it's your basic platformer Metroidvania yep. style, Metroidvanias. isn't it? Metroidvanias. Okay. If you play one, play Shantae and the Pirates Curse. It's really, it's a really good game. I uh, and it has Jake Kaufman did the music, so the music slaps. Oh yeah, then you're good. Yeah. <laughs> well, usually I think there are a couple soundtracks. I don't, I don't think he did Seven Sirens, the most recent one. Why is my keyboard now hitting the end button twice? It's telling you it's time to go, even though we got like an hour. I mean, I beat the shit out of my keyboard to try and get it to work, and then I realized I just had to unplug it and plug it back in, so that might be something to do with it. That's fair. What's y'all's favorite flavor of Pop-Tart? Hey, Google! Like, we were Why legitimately Pop having a screaming match about this at work, and it's obviously s'mores, but I want to see if y'all agree or disagree. I mean, this will potentially decide our incredible. friendship. Okay, yeah, well, I, just I already know you're not gonna. I already know my answer is gonna make a lot of people mad. Yeah, what is it? <laughs> I have probably had Pop Tarts, probably at the very most one, two, three, four, 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 five times in my life. I, I bet you got the most. And basic I didn't one too, the strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember any of the Pop Tarts, have just had red. Strawberry. We shit on strawberry. It's really strawberry yeah. flavored, probably. I well, didn't realize there was a s'more flavor, so s'mores. I will trust. Oh, yes, I will trust so, that my love is correct in his assertion of what the what the so correct here's the thing. flavor is. S'mores is good, but 
Cuckoo's and Cream okay. is also fucking incredible, I, and so is Chocolate Fudge. I can accept that. I, I can't do Chocolate Fudge, because if I eat too much chocolate, I start sneezing, so I typically kind of stay what? away from... Yeah. Um, it, Are you allergic to chocolate? It, yes and no. Um, My wife doesn't believe me, even though I've literally ate a Reese's cup and then sneezed in her face, but apparently that's not good enough. Reese's cup. Um, Reese's cup. Eat them up, beat them up, beat them up, beat them up, beat them up. Beat em up. Beat em up. Um autism just but going through again apparently it's one of those things and like a lot of people actually have this it's almost like lactose intolerant people but like mm -hmm. it's very common for people to eat chocolate and then potentially have to sneeze afterwards yep i can see it yeah so the human body is a weird weird thing we are not a creature always... designed to survive because they have to put warning labels on everything it's not necessarily that. Our body also will say, hey, let's kill ourselves to change and make ourselves better. I'm dying. Good. That means Good. it's working. That means it's wor <laughs> yeah, our body is also like, hey, there's a slight, there's a bad bug. What if we just heated your whole body up? We'll just overkill the fuck out of it and make you miserable for it. It's, for it's just... Three it's, to five it's business just, days. Like, it, it is just one of the most... It's like... Like, trying to understand how the human body works really is, like, trying to understand the whole lore of, like, an anime world or an RPG world of, like, okay, I understand that these systems work in tandem, but, like, why? Why would this why? be? <laughs> why would natural, why would this world allow this to, to like, why would this be the end result? You how just do we get here? You just explained the gummy ship uh, tutorial stuff in the first Kingdom Hearts game. Why does this exist? Because yes. uh-huh. Uh also like, I understand I, why that it does work together. I understand it, but like why? Why? <laughs> also, uh Carm in her own Discord server just tagged me and linked something for Dragon's Dogma 2, which I am so fucking excited to play. Uh apparently there's a camping cutscene, and then the cutscene shows food. You know, like how most like RPG or any kind of game yeah. like that. Apparently, the food that they're using and showing off is actual food that they were cooking, like real food that oh they cooked God. for real and put it into the game. Holy shit! Have I think you... that's what they did for Final mm -hmm. Fantasy 15 as well. Was Final uh, Fantasy 15? Because that stuff looks details. so fucking good. That was one of the first, and that was probably the first game I remember to ever do the like, at least that I recall of like all of the food in this game looks amazing. They made toast look genuinely delicious. <laughs> like I want. Ignis, give me the fucking toast, man. Have either of you watched uh, Delicious in Dungeon yet? No, no I need to. I, I keep I hearing it's so good. It I is, heard it's so good. I like it is good to the point that I plan on incorporating like the whole you're gonna need to survive off this dungeon food into my campaign. Like it, it's not it's not an overly complex plot. Like man is just trying to save his sister. It, it's it's really good. But they, they ha the main thing is to go in to the dungeon, get food in order to live. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And also, Parker, I had to look it up. But apparently, yeah, the creating the in-game dishes for Final Fantasy XV, they were working off of food photography, but frequently involved actually cooking the recipes that yep. appears. That is so cool. I love it when people do that. Man. Because it's that little extra. That's all but you also like, But also, like, what better day at work could you have than, like, Yo, so what are we, so what, what are we, what are we doing today, boss? Well, we need to get the food looking right. So we're going to make, we're going to make the food. And then afterwards, let's just. But could you we, imagine we got, if the boss is like Gordon Ramsay, though, just calling him a fucking donkey every time he messes up? You try to, you try to like, you know, flip the egg over because you want, uh, you don't want sunny side. You want it uh, over hard or over easy. It just splatters all over. You fucking donkey. Yeah. Well, my, and my favorite Gordon Ramsay's insult to this day as I was watching Master Chef, and he goes, that looks like my grandpa's colostomy bag, and he just throws the plate on the ground. I just really, really like yeah. the idea of, like, I just, the idea of, like, Hajime Tabata, this super relatively wholesome Japanese man, just screaming at people like that just That's that funny. gives me the director of final fantasy 15 like that just gives me it, it would be like imagining like someone like sakurai just like this small japanese man just screaming at people <laughs> like, 
Well, if you want to see something that will kind of kind of warm your heart here a little bit, I'm going to share my screen this way. It can also be uh, seen on the uh, podcast as well. Uh, but this is the man that Snorlax was initially based on. Yes, of. yes, yes. Absolutely. Well, what? Yeah, yeah, Snorlax was based off this dude. And it's just, Who it's it's so wholesome and it makes my heart happy. Who is this guy? Uh, I don't know his or name. His name. Uh, just look up, like, who inspired Snorlax and you'll get plenty of pictures of this dude. Uh, inspired by veteran Pokemon getting desire, his huge appearance as well as a model for the Snow Relax Pokemon. Hold on, it makes my heart happy. Pokemon art director Ken Sugimori, Mori, yeah, Snow Relax is inspired by veteran Pokemon game designer Koji Nishio. Nishio, Nish, Kino, Nishio. There we go. You're doing great. I am the Japanese last names. Sometimes I can get them. Sometimes I can't. So that one took me a moment. <laughs> do you feel as a whole here? Uh, and, and this is definitely the weeb in me coming out like a full force. Do you feel super smart when you see an anime name or a uh, location, anything, and you like know what that's called? And then you hear it said in the actual show and you're like, I knew it. I knew it this entire time. I mean, I make a, um, like, I make a point to try and pronounce anyone's <laughs> name correctly, like, in, like, the own tongue yeah. that someone would have. So, like, I try to pronounce, like, just if I'm speaking about, like, a Japanese person's name, like, I try to pronounce, like, the R's as they would and stuff, or mm -hmm. or, or a friend like, Carm pronounces her vo her name wait. differently, even though it's yeah. spelled, like, Anna, that's, it's pronounced Anna. Anna. So, like, I try to, yeah, I try to. Try to okay. pronounce it like there is yeah. So like there... like I do feel if I'm like correct in that a little, I'm like little I do feel air of superiority about it. Yeah. Well, yeah, because <laughs> Parker and etymology is the thing he's good at, and that's all he wants to be good at. Or well, all more vernacular than etymology, <laughs> but yes. Yeah. Oh, it's all of the same. Etymology is the history of a word. I have. I am always fascinated by that, though. No language yeah. is like. While it is the most made-up bullshit of bullshittery to ever bullshit, it mm. is super interesting to learn. So I know, on the, on that note, I know I mentioned this the other day when when us donkeys were playing Mario Kart, but I will mention it again because I need it on podcast how much this genuinely, genuinely bothers me. So, uh, a month and a bit ago, Persona 3 Reload came out. Phenomenal remake of a phenomenal game. It's amazing. So good. It's everything I wanted. I cried again when I finished it. Yeah. I love it. In that game, your character, one of his social links, uh, is attained by playing an MMO. Which is fun, because just all of it is just referencing earlier Persona games. And he meets a character called Maya. Another, Persona, another earlier Persona reference. Maya, because this game takes place in the mid-2000s, speaks in completely in leet speak. And it's so good. Like, aggressive oh leet speak. And she is a she is very much a like woman in her thirties or forties doing this. Does you find actually... out, and and yeah, she speaks in completely elite speak. And some some piece of monkey shit decided we need to mod this game because, as they put it, we need to get rid of the elite speak because it's made up and cringy. Okay, I'm so sharpening my cane to go beat this, to, to okay. go have words with this now, child. Hold now hold on a second. I have one question. Now, obviously, leet speak. Whenever we say leet speak, it's like saying one three three seven and yeah. such, and saying like replacing zero or O's with zeros. Yes. Do they actually pronounce? Because I know no, because I know in some Persona games they actually have voice acting and such, this or is it actually just typed out like that? This one doesn't have uh, voices for this social link. The rest of the social links in the game are fully voiced. So but, this yeah. one is typed out like that. Yeah, so you have to understand. Okay. That... I get it. That fucking sucks Oof. for people who can't read lead speak. You know what? I, for me, it would be kind of like when uh, Pokemon 3 Fuck you. <laughs> came out with all the unknown and they released the unknown library. Oh. That would be me oh, because I, I haven't seen lead speak in... 
God, I don't even want to say how many years. I don't think I would be able to honestly uh, pick it up and, and run with it again. You now do have me going to go look because I don't know how to spell his name, but I know his name. And his name is Abstract, and he's yeah. a follower of ours. At or I believe it's four B five seven R four C seven. Yeah, and I didn't realize that it was Abstract at first because my mind—I mean, my mind was trying to read off every letter and just kind of like follow it number by number, and then somebody said Abstract, and I'm like. Oh, because it's literally lead speech right there. Yeah, that's lead speak, and yeah. I'm looking at it like it just seems like a jumble of letters and numbers. It was just no. immediate for it me. Is, just four naturally. is a, I, S I, is five, seven is T. Like I miss it. lead speak. I miss it. It, it reminds calling, me of uh, just calling people noobs. It, it reminds me of Turner Boy commits tax evasion. The uwu girl that you find, uh, she oh. she talks. Oh my like god. This. And the only line that Turnip Boy has of the game is going, no. It I makes me stop uh, happy. They say stop? Yeah. And then you know what's the best part? They reference that in Rob's a Bank. Oh, do they? I still need yeah, to play it. Yeah, because him saying a word actually has um, consequences. I, uh... Consequence, consequence, consequence. It's really good. You need to play uh, Rob's a Bank. I, yeah. did, I think I did three streams or two streams of that because the game was a lot bigger than I expected. Yeah, and I, I... And I want to 100% it. I, I definitely plan to, uh, and obviously, uh, to anybody watching, if you do want to watch us uh, separately, links will be below. Um, I've kind of taken a backseat a little bit for streaming. Um, I've been yeah, focusing more on YouTube. I... I like just being able to sit down, work on things my own pace, and then just uh, produce them as I go along. I'm still going to stream probably twice a week or so, but mm -hmm. I find myself enjoying the YouTube aspect of things more. That's fair. Yeah. That's I, fair. Uh, I, I, I will I, say, uwu, uwu speak, speaking in uwu, however you want to say it, Hello. is um, it is just we have leet speak at home. <laughs> God. Uh, can we not have Uwu oh, speak? Oh, I love that it is so just, much. It is just we have lead speak at home. I love that. Can we oh, not have lead speak at home? That makes God. my heart happy. God, so, I love you. God, I love you. It's, I, I actually find that funny too, Bricker, because when I met you, it was Sunday, Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I think off, then Friday, Saturday. You used to stream five days a week, and now you're down to two Maybe two, if not maybe one yeah. stream. And then I'm still sitting here at my Monday, well, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday stream. There's a multiple there's a multitude of reasons. Uh first, Besides no work. longer working at home. That was that, uh, that was a big blow. Two, still so I found out Friday that because they don't have a permanent store for me yet, because it requires moving a lot of people and two managers that work at different locations nearby are moving within the next month so they don't know like if that's going to be a possible commute for them if they're going to get moved to a different store i'm actually going to continue my training period at the store that i'm at right now um right. so not having a dedicated schedule slash store yet yeah, yeah that hurts of, yeah that's what's throwing it yeah, off no. and very inconsistent but, yeah. yeah i talked i think i talked about this a little too in when we were playing mario kart again on yeah. friday um, my workplace is now going to possibly experiment yep. with a second shift. And I'm like, fuck you. I'm not doing second shift. I've done that for a year. And that was awful. Yeah. And, um, 10 hour shifts. And then the 10 hour shift would be like 7 a.m. till six, depending on, and I might be able to get out earlier, depending on if I, how I do my lunches and such. I normally do a 15 minute lunch because I just want to get home earlier. Honestly, I'm tired of fair. work. I want to get home. So depending on that, but if they do that kind of thing then that fucking screws over my streaming schedule because I'm going to get home, I'm going to be exhausted and tired, and I'm not going to be able to do it. Yeah. Which means I might only be able to, if they do go through with this, depending on how I work it out, I might only be able to stream like twice a week again myself. And it's mm. like, I don't want to do this because yeah. I like streaming. I personally like streaming over uh, YouTube because I like genuinely interacting with people yeah. and just having those moments live instead yeah. of like on YouTube where people comment on it. Sure. But I want to be able to comment with time. you. Yeah, no, I, I like. I, I love fair. commenting with people, sharing the experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm I, all about the shared experience. With but YouTube also gives you the shared experience. It's just slower. Yeah, yeah. And 
There, there are mean, pros and cons either way. Yeah, yes. and it, it's kind of one of those things of, like, I, I feel like Twitch, for example, is a little bit more forgiving, especially if you have a Discord uh, group, because obviously if people are in the Discord, there's more likely they're going to see whenever you go live. Meanwhile, YouTube, right. you are at the mercy of the algorithm. So, for example, um, looking at my content here, I had a Relicanth video that did uh, 1.3 thousand views, 49 likes. The very next week, I had a Tauros video that had only 123 views and 9 likes. Then I yes. had two videos with well over 200 views. And then last week's video, 45 views, 9 likes, yet two days ago, 632 views and 24 likes so it just it fluctuates way too much it, to be consistent it also like there's so much about like it there's also not just that with the algorithm there's so many little things depending on what types of tags you want to use so people can potentially find your thing when you release it yeah. um yeah. if another big content creator <laughs> releases something roughly around the same time yours is going to get buried this actually happened to a uh an indie dev uh, not too long ago, they literally yeah. just released a game, and then yeah, the yeah. moment they released the game, EA released eleven games. So theirs just got buried. Yep. Well, that's why it's, right so it's now, um, starting on Tuesday, I have a video dropping of me doing a Legend of Korra reaction uh, video because one, it's one of the few shows that you can essentially watch without immediately getting destroyed by copyright laws. Because the creator's like, no, I want this to be fair use to be for people to be able to use. Thank and God. And two, with how popular Avatar The Last Airbender is due to the live action series releasing, a lot of people are rewatching this kind of stuff. So, like, it, it's kind of hopping on to this while it's still relevant to try and get a few new followers out of it. Yeah, which is fair. Do what becomes relevant at the time mm -hmm. and you can potentially get more. Actually, that reminds me, too. There was a. I, I've, I'm now actually watching her on occasion. I got a raid while doing Helldivers by somebody who raided me with almost 80 fucking people. Very nice. I was blown the fuck away. And now on occasion, she has actually popped back into my chat just to talk and bullshit, which is cool. But it's like, I played Helldivers at the right time mm -hmm, to yeah. very luckily get this raid. Yep. And it's just, that is just the chance of everything too, yeah. which is fucking annoying. Well but really cool when it happens. Yeah, that's like I was talking about uh, the guy, Scott's Thoughts, that ended up commenting on my YouTube it video. I'm like, out of all of the YouTube Pokemon challenge channels there are, the fact that mine came across your desk is your feed. Yeah. insane to me. Yeah, you, you never know. Right. Side note. Yes. Parker, did it just get darker in your room? Yeah, I had uh, another tab that was open, and it had uh, it just had opened an ad. <laughs> I literally just look over, and I'm like, hold on. I'm pretty sure it was way brighter, yeah. which is really funny because I know that's the start of this. My room was very dark because I have bulbs that, you know, over time get brighter. Yeah. Now my room, you can actually see shit, like the duck right back there that Aaron made. I love it, by the way. It's so um, cool. Yeah, it, it's so kind funny. of funny because as it's gotten darker in your room, it's very much a, a Batman kind of situation. Right. There he is. He's good. Just put, up, just put up a white. Look at friend. I need I need Aaron to crochet me a Perry the Platypus. I want, with I want, the, so, I want the Bulbasaur I'll, stuff. I'll get, that too. I'll get the see all the stuff in there. Uh, so this actually is from... None of you guys have seen Has Been Hotel yet, have you? Nope. No. You should watch it. That, that Maybe is a one of these it is, It's a really good adult-style cartoon that actually hits on a lot of really big, like potentially life issues that people can come across That's fair. Mm -hmm. like i one of my favorite scenes and it comes with basic what the character what the character's name is angel dust and the way they always people always see him as is quite literally a femboy slut because that's what he is Jake. he's a porn yeah. star who talks about all sorts of doing all sorts of things and then you have another person who is basically a bartender drunk who literally just tells the guy you're not being you. You're just being something you're not, and you gotta stop doing this. Ow. And eventually, there there is a song that comes in from Angel Dust that is like it's called Poison, and it's literally about mm. constantly drinking 
the one guy who's you know causing all the problems that makes it so he is the way he has to be constantly drinking that poison because you can't get enough of it and you will die from it but you can't stop all right it, it actually gets a little deeper than you would expect on some <laughs> occasions all right. also one of my favorite songs is poison next to loser baby god loser poison. baby's so good <laughs> different poison different oh, poison my, my bad my bad I'm a loser baby. <laughs> oh, different loser baby. Be he, he <laughs> these are different this is more of an upbeat loser baby <laughs> I thought the back song was very upbeat. I mean, I I would listen to you sing it all day. To be fair, the, the, this one, this loser baby is literally telling somebody to their face, like as their as their life's falling apart. Yeah, you're just a fucking loser, but you're also a loser like me. We're literally eating the same shit sandwich, and we could do this together. Jesus, sounds like basket case. No, it's oh well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> listen, it's aggressive love, which I'm all for. I even Wholesome had some positivity or Wholesome, aggressive positivity, aggressive positivity, which I I had that happen in my chat um, when we were playing Remnant 2. It was between Karm and Spoon Lord, and it was really funny to love. watch happen uh, because Karm. well, Spoon Lord would Karm come in and just scream about uh, what was it? I'm going to tuck you into bed. I'm going to give you the nice warm drink of whatever you want, and you're going to get yourself some fucking sleep. And then Karm just comes in. How fucking dare you? <laughs> With all I, sorts of positivity. I, honestly, though, like, I think we could all use, especially after daylight savings time. Hey, I woke up at one. No, I woke up at two. Yeah, I... I didn't go to bed till six. Yeah, I woke I, up I at went, six or seven. I don't know which one. Oh, hey, I, I woke up around the... I went to bed around one-ish because somebody decided to call in. We close at 11 on Saturdays. Called in at... 10.59 and said, hey, what time do you guys close? I said, basically right now. They go, oh, can I get a medium pizza? Well, I'm not allowed to say no. What the fuck do you think? Wait, what do you... <sighs> Come if on, they call really... in when we are still open, we have to take the order, unfortunately. It was, That's and it was the same with um, when I used to work at a grocery store. It was the same. Like, it was like, like our our directions from the manager who of course was never there when it closed because why would he be he was a sack of shit uh was very much uh like no if they're in before the store closes like you will wait you just wait and we're not going to pay you for that yeah. for time you're waiting there See? i did not i did not feel bad when uh a few a few months after i left for college and i told like my direct manager like yeah he's you saw what he did to all of us. Uh, he got fired like two months after, and I yeah. was like, "Like, <laughs> I don't know. I so feel so bad. Like, I know it's your livelihood, but also treat your staff with respect. It's a very easy thing yeah, to do." Yeah, like that's why. Yeah. As much as like people obviously crap on food workers and stuff like that, this is probably the best job that I've had, where the manager actually, and even the higher ups, actually care about their employees. Like once a week. Everybody from the main office on a Friday night, the busiest night of the week, actually comes in to work at a specific store every week, and they rotate out which person That's is working nice. where. This way you actually get to know the people at the top of the food chain. And you get to see, and those people get to see what goes on in mm -hmm. trenches, so to speak, to some extent. Yep. The, the guy funny. that I worked with, uh, he was the person that hired me. Uh, he's, I think... He's like three steps below CEO, but that's only because like the CEO was at the busier store working that night. Like mm -hmm. it, it's insane how much they actually lay themselves down it the line does, to make uh, sure Friday goes well. Well, and honestly, it does a lot as well for you. Like I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a higher up, and I work for a damn youth charity. Yeah. So even if I was <laughs> higher up, like whoop you do Only so far we can go here. If, if you'd be, if you're an executive at a youth charity, like, you're, you're working, you're doing good work, but also, like, you're executive <laughs> at a youth charity, congratulations. Um, but it's why ever since I've joined, like, my role is, is the marketing director, is to coordinate all that stuff, and I've always, I went in immediately, and I was like, no. As I went to all of the, like, the program heads, and I was like, yeah, if I can be part of your programs, even just a little bit here and there, if I can be a part of our summer camp, if I can be a part of 
like seeing what goes on during the matches, if I can do the regular training that you put the other people through. If my job is to tell the public what we do, it's probably like easier to... for me to do if I know exactly what we do. God, you know what? That reminds me of my own workplace. We, So in my workplace, besides all the uh, the scheduling, we are probably going to be changing up. We also have been hiring a lot because we are, in two months or so, we're going to be doing some construction and expanding the warehouse and expanding the production Ooh. and all that. So that looks like it's going to be fun. But we've also been, obviously, since we've been hiring a lot, we've also been getting a lot of new people in the office who are salesmen and such. We have these particular computers. They're called Razors. And they're very tiny computers. They're like yeah. this lo- this wide with like being this thin. They're very thin, yeah. relatively thin. They're relatively good computers. What My boss was actually talking to some of them as they were trying to like, you know, sh- get out samples to people, show stuff off. And he actually went to one or looked at the salesman as they were walking away and say, Hey, can you grab that Razor PC? And then the salesman's like, What the fuck's a Razor PC? You sell this shit. <laughs> Why do you not know what it is? Come on. Yeah, that sounds about right. And so hey, we're supposed to trust these wrong. people to, you know, put orders together for us to work on. And let me tell you, lately, a lot of orders have just been, Oh, hey, why is this added in here? I don't know. Now we got to go to get the order changed. Two days later, is the order changed yet? No. Fucking great. It's now just sitting on my bench taking space. Communication is so important. And they lack it. Oh, and it's bad. Real quick, um, because real I can't do uh, next Sunday. I can do Saturday, but it wouldn't be until like 9 Eastern time if you guys oh, would be able to. It's good for me. 9 Eastern? Yeah, Saturday. Yeah, it should be fine. Okay. Because that'll be after D and D ends, the kiddos starting to get ready for bed, and then we'll still be off the phone by like. Oh, he loves you guys. <laughs> I f- I feel like your kid legitimately just loves to just see people in general, like certain people. Um, like if he sees them, especially if dad or mom's been is hanging out with them, that's that's yeah. what really does it. He then, that establishes that trust. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's also one of those things that, um, and I'm sure the autism partially comes into play. Um, he's always been oh, comfortable with uh, people that are older than him rather than people his own age. Like, it, it's kind of funny because, like, I've always kind of compared him to this even before we found out that he was autistic. But I'm like, he's like this little tiny old man that is already done with kids. Like, he, he doesn't want kids. He doesn't like kids. He just wants to be old and in his nursing home eating his applesauce. Crisscross applesauce. I, mean, uh, I haven't also, heard I anybody people. say crisscross applesauce in years. Guess how I'm sitting. <laughs> I, w- I work. I work in a children's charity. I hear it all the you time. Hear it all say, the time. You hear it daily. Pretty, you, pretty you hear it daily. I mention it, it's and then weird. Fricker's the father here, who probably has heard it, and just like I don't want to remember this. Yeah, it, it's I mean, kind of like uh, hear... Coco Melon. I, I try not to remember oh. it too much. I mean, I'd rather hear crisscross applesauce than Coco Melon or that fucking um. Kids have this like. I was crazy once, copy pasta, and like my roommate now does it to me. And it, like it starts with like if someone says the word crazy, it's like crazy. I was crazy once, and they locked me in a padded room or something. I and then it so. ends with it ends with them saying crazy, and it keeps going. And I'm like, you 15 year olds, I will throw you down the mountain. Shoddy <laughs> tried to put that in my chat, and nobody like. <clears throat> I, I think he I'm was the sure only one that got it. Got it. Yeah, you might have, because like you were the only well. one that got it, and I think you being the only one that understood what he was going for kind of bummed him out because he immediately dropped it. I was, I, oh, I was like, I'm <laughs> sorry. I, I hate it so much. I had a week of otherwise wonderful, wholesome, wholesome teenagers that I'm so proud of and so happy I got to spend all this time with, and got to watch him do all this cool stuff and they were telling me about what's going on in their life i had to listen to them do it and they all kept doing it and i'm like some of you that are doing this you are you are i can't use the word but you are you are some of my favorites and i will push you down the mountain wait what word can't you use favorite oh you can't oh you can't actually tell them that oh yeah i I yeah no i actually definitely did you're not supposed to. There was, the, the, I, I couldn't help it. There were these, there were these two kids. There were these two, these two like sixteen-year-old lads. They're dating. They're super wholesome. And I was like, 
boys at Geek. I'm sorry, I can't say this, but like, you, you, you two are my favorite. You two made the whole week for me. <laughs> I, I'm not supposed to, uh, same kind of thing, like, I, I'm not supposed to have favorites, but there was one dude that, like, my first day there, it was my first Friday night, and dude came up to me and was like, hey, um, so, I don't know what your interests are, but... I'm just going to start spouting off random topics, and we're going to see where we click. And the first one he named off was, like, anime, and it just spiraled out of control from there. It was the best Friday night I've ever that's, heard. That's, that's just how it works. Yeah. I mean... Oh, my God. You just reminded me. Because I... I've only recently started doing this within, like, the last month or so. Just saying, okay. Just say, okay. <laughs> just like that. And it's, it is okay. starting to click... It clicked immediately with one of my coworkers, and now he just says it like that. I'm starting to do it on stream. It's yeah, starting to click with anybody I'm playing with. DVD, it just it was one of those things of like I didn't say it out loud because I'm like I've taken enough of this man's phrases, but it just it kept playing in the back of my head. Like I tried to pallet stun, but I get knocked down, and I'm like, okay. We um, I'm pretty <laughs> sure mean, he you're took welcome. It from, I'm pretty sure he actually <laughs> took it from my roommate. If that helps. Oh, um, that does okay. Help a little bit. And I, the guy, I always know it from him saying it because of that one video of like, there's this woman on on like a a guide in the mountains, and she's just like going off about how beautiful it is, and then cuts the camera to him, and he's just like, okay. okay. <laughs> so that's the thing. I'm not taking it just from that too. There's been like a lot of videos. I used to watch this like you years sold ago. the word okay. No, no. I, th th there's Dare been a lot you. of videos. I that, well, with maybe. You. you fucking <laughs> asshole. I realized what you were saying <laughs> partway through. You <laughs> fucking <laughs> prick. <laughs> It's, um, well, I mean, it's like how at my work we have a thing and we've gotten all the kids now to say it. Um, I don't know if either of you would have watched it because it's a Canadian show and it is pretty popular. I've never watched it myself called Kim's Convenience. And one of the characters in that show who owns the store, whenever somebody leaves, he goes, okay, see you. And so like, that's just what we will do. And like, and it's one of the things that just evolves into like, when one of us says, see you, then like everybody just as loud as we can. Just scream it. She was like, oh, guess you? That's, that's like at work, uh, whenever we're supposed to send in the uh, cheeseburger sub or the uh, nightmare sub, we're supposed to yell, patty flip, to let them know that, you know, go ahead and send it through the oven. And at the beginning of the night, it always starts out very clear, patty flip. But by the end of the night, there's this one dude that just, it's like a brontosaurus screaming. You just hear, Arr! <laughs> and then you still know what's happening uh -huh. though you still know what it is that's all that matters <laughs> you just default you just devolve from normal functioning humans to dumbasses yeah well and the thing <laughs> is the first time i heard that i looked at my manager i'm like Did somebody just kick a dog what the hell happened here oh no they've just lo started losing their minds the day's yeah. been going on too long <laughs> well he was working a uh, 10 hour day that day so it makes sense i would not blame you if you just started going uh, <laughs> you can tell uh you can tell with me you can tell that i am i you my roommate can tell that i'm functioning functional functioning well as a person today Are uh, clearly you? today i am not but you can clearly tell not. if he says hi to me and i respond with just incoherent raptor screeching <laughs> if i actually greet him or say nothing then you know that's a cause for concern but if i just go <laughs> that probably yeah, did not pick me my Discord mic. I love but... it. Uh, yeah, if I just screech, then he knows. If he I knows it's fine. were more dedicated to I mean... editing this, there would definitely be a hot dog or something edited at that mouth opening moment because there was no sound whatsoever. <laughs> Just, just all you have to do is like make it so the hot dog goes, and then it just at a certain point it cuts off and it just keeps going, like it's going down. God, you know what that reminds me of? Because like I'm Tim, no, 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 don't be concerned. Now. This is actually pretty fucking hilarious. Uh, Tim and Aaron, we have a couple friends who are they, they very much subscribe to the idea of I don't care about if you're gay or anything like that. Just don't do stuff around me. Fine, whatever. But one of the guys, he's very. It was very funny. First off, when I was building his computer, he wasn't happy with the rainbow RPG, and I'm like, fuck you, I'm putting it in anyways, get fucked. <laughs> Wait, so did he not like the rainbow RPG because it's pride? Pretty much. But he's he's not a bad guy. He's he's okay. He's but here's not, the funny he's part. He's not coming off great right now. Well, no, here's the funny part. Um, 
was when because Tim has a pretty good talent, and it's really funny to watch happen on occasion. He could take a whole hot dog and swallow oh my it God, yes. without any issues. He did it in front of that guy, and he immediately went like, "Holy shit, you're gay!" <laughs> and I'm like, "He's not gay. He's, he's just he's really good." With he very much is. Yeah. Well, that's he knows like, how to do it. I, there's this YouTuber I watched that got banned on Twitch because he, they said that he uh, sexually ate a banana, and he goes, no, I was just really hungry that day, and I ate the thing in two bites. <laughs> I mean, if you know if you know how to control it's your gag, you right. can do it in one. Well, I mean... He <laughs> it's, it's a banana. Right, it's like, banana. the thing it's is, there's phallic. no way to eat a banana without looking somewhat sexual. Correct. Most or a hot dog. Do not add or me corn TikToks. dogs. I don't need to see it. Honestly, there's most things you do and or say you can very easily devolve into. That is a euphemism if you want. Listen, you got hot dogs, you got corn dogs, you got tacos. Yeah. Yeah. You can go, you got roast beef. You can go any which way. <laughs> no, the, the worst one. Because I never would have thought this would be, this would be dirty. My roommate, before we were roommates, when we were all still in college, before we all split and then ended up all moving back to the city at the same time, mm -hmm. we went to a mall, a bunch of us, and we got mall warm pretzels. I love them. We have a guy who we went to college with, I won't name him, uh, who was known for being a, let, let, to, to put it lightly, an anime fan and a Smash Brothers player, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. the stereotypes of how that would devolve into into someone. Very noticeable odors and whatnot, and never outright confirmed, but wouldn't surprise anyone if had some yeah. specific uh, desires, shall we say. And we were eating these, the few of us were eating these mall pretzels, and Cody, my roommate, just like, just like drips a bunch onto him. He's like, oh, you know, insert college name. This is like what he experiences on his lonely Friday nights. And I'm like, you. <laughs> for, for <your laughs> he blew the screen. <laughs> he's out. He's out. He quits. What's wrong, Ricker? Is there a problem, buddy? <laughs> What's going on? Hmm. You know what? Oh no, wait, Parker. I don't think you were there for the waterfall. Yes, I was there. You because, were there for that waterfall. Yeah, because you I was mean, one of the ones who convinced I... Seth to read that. Oh yeah, you were the one who convinced Seth to read it, and he read well, it out well, loud with enthusiasm. This, Another friend. So, I'll be no. Uh, I, I will be very PG in how I word this. <laughs> uh, another sort of mutual friend of of Marcus and I. One of the people who was there for that pretzel thing, actually, uh, they have even more uh, degenerate friends, and we have a lot of degenerates. Hold, yeah, but this, yeah, but this person's friend group was like beyond what you would think, uh, like very degenerate, and told us that one of their friends wrote a fanfic. Wrote a furry erotic fanfic. And let's just <laughs> without getting into it, and you like what you like, like yes, no, no flame, no flame to anybody. Uh, but it was that in this fanfic, there were acts, there were homosexual acts that were had, and um one character used the finishing and described it as waterfalls of so the, the, yeah. the phrase waterfalls <laughs> between Marcus, between Karm, myself like if you say waterfalls around us we That's are the on first edge thought. we are on edge we are oh not okay we, we bonded that night through some horrible horrible content as a reminder, this was fanfic. That means this person probably was into this. Have but I... very much, because it was pretty well an insert. Mm -hmm. I ever told you the story Oh my god, Cody heard away. me say that in the other room and just messaged me waterfalls. Wait, what? <laughs> have, have I ever told you the, the stories and uh, capades of Squirrel Boy from uh, when I went to an anime convention? 
Let's no, hear about but... Squirrel Boy. All right, so this this is how we're going to close out the episode because we're getting close to that time. Um, so we were trying to find enough people for a room to go to an anime convention, and my friend... As you do. Yeah, somebody messaged my friend, and she goes, yeah, he's into art, he likes music, he's a furry, but he's really into these animes. I'm like, no, 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 no. You can't mumble one part <laughs> that you don't want me to hear. Repeat a. So... Nothing against that. We ended up meeting the dude. Right. He seemed very much normal during our first meeting. Fast forward to the anime convention. And yeah, he comes do. in wearing a choker with a small leash attached to it over his shoulder. Okay. Like, mm, weird. Not a deal breaker. Fine. And then he starts pulling out all these different puppets. But the main one was a squirrel with a little tiny black vest and a top hat uh, named Waffles. Do you and, like Waffles? Uh, no, I did not like Waffles. Um, <laughs> we end up going to Mongolian Barbecue, a wonderful restaurant. If you ever get the opportunity to try it, please do. Where he, we didn't know this at the time because like we were all bundled up pretty well. He brought the puppet. The puppet also had a little tiny winter coat. And then he proceeded to only talk to the waiter through the puppet the entire night. There is a picture, and I wish I could find it, but it's saved to one of my oh. friend's phones and it didn't make it to Facebook, where he's talking to the waiter through this puppet. He is dead set, like, staring ahead at somebody else, talking to the waiter above him with this puppet. One of our friends just, their eyes have glazed over. They have completely checked out. The other one looks to be filled with murderous intent because after this guy came and delivered our plates, he we never heard back from him again the rest of the night, and I truthfully do not blame him to this day. Um, then, he wore this puppet on his hand most of the weekend, and at one point, uh, Ronifero starts fisting the puppet when he's not in the room, and one of our friends goes, hey, um, have you ever heard of a pleshophile? He... Wait. What? I've never heard of that. And now I don't like the fact that I know this exists. Good. He rips off the puppet. He throws it to the ground and probably takes the hottest shower known to man because he comes out and his entire arm is just red from shoulder to fingertips. Just red as all get out this squirrel boy motherfucker would not leave us alone the entire anime convention and during the rave was still waving his little squirrel hand around again you you like what you like but my god and especially especially like you know as long as everybody's consenting adults it matters not who is involved in right. the things. Correct. Like, do whatever the hell so, you want, whatever scenarios, right. whatever costumes, whatever cosplay, roleplay, whatever the hell yes. y'all want to do, totally fine. Just, just don't take it out in public. There, there is a, there, <laughs> there's a time and place for everything. Room. Yes. yes. Keep it. And there's nothing wrong with talking about those things with people when people want like, to when, hear it. When it's a conversation. Interests. Yeah. Like, yes. I have no problem discussing this stuff with anybody. But like, just d- maybe don't it may, maybe don't have it in it, it if it's like an anxiety trigger or something. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Or like if it's like a if it's like a like a like a response. There's a, kind of thing. Oh, there's um yeah. there's a super wholesome person that I've I get reels. My friend sends me reels of a person who I believe has autism on Instagram and every video this man makes, which is super wholesome stuff, always is holding one of like two or three stuffed animals. Cause like, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, yeah. yeah. If, if that's, if it's your comfort thing, more power to you, but like, be aware of the room. Please, please don't take, and please don't ever take the stuff that you use in a bedroom into public. Yeah. Oh like, my god, I have seen keep that so in the bedroom. There are some. 
there are things that don't need to be put out into the public. I okay, there are there are some events where it's fine. You could do it. It is an event for this. Yeah, neurotic right. show. Yeah, absolutely. Do, 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 do. That's what it's there for. But, the, the, the only one I could think of is like one of the kinkiest things I've ever seen was the Flotsam Street Fair, and people go out there. It's basically like a pride thing too. That's, so that's it, a it's real a real good name. That's a really it is. strong name. It, 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 it will change your life. I'm, I mean, it, and it's also like everybody's out there, they're doing their thing, and it's like, yeah. this is made for this. So yeah. it's good. It's fine. But if you do this in a normal public scenario, it gets really awkward. It's one of those things, too, like a lot of people when it comes to, you know, their own kinks and such, most of them, pretty much all of them will say, we don't want to have to expose people to our stuff. We don't need to. There's no need for this. And yet we get a motherfucker out there who will wear dog masks and shit because they're like, I, this is me and I want to be like this even in public. It's like, God, please stop. I don't want to see you anymore. And that has been Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls Scheduling Conflicts. <laughs> we'll be back next week. Have a good night. Bye. Why would you end it like that, you bastard? I didn't want to think about the waterfalls again.